Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core studio. Welcome to the show. So some absolutely crazy things have been happening recently. I mean, yesterday we got some massive pre-con leaks, and yeah, if you haven't seen that episode... Make sure you check that one out. Jolene and, yeah, Benny Brax are going to be both very, very popular commanders, I think. And, uh, yeah, a lot of other exciting cards are in that episode, too. And also, earlier this morning, we got Smuggler's Share, which, yeah, this card is going to be expensive. I mean, maybe not as expensive as Smothering Tithe, but uh, definitely a very high in-demand card that is somewhat reminiscent of something like a Smothering Tithe. This thing's powerful. This thing is going to be, well, you're going to see it quite a bit, I'm sure. And speaking of powerful, well, this episode is about yet another, well, what appears to be a leak with the image that we got with Denry Klin, Editor-in-Chief, and this commander, well, it was way too easy to break. I broke it in like three seconds. Now, in all seriousness, really quick, in spoiler season, Eddie has been a massive help, so please, actually, I mean, I know I do say blame Eddie, but thank Eddie in the comments below. So, yeah, thank you. And now with that said, let's jump into it. So, Denry Klin, Editor-in-Chief, is a 2-2 can advisor that costs 2 white blue. What's in the papers there, Denry? <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna stop that. Anyways, Denry Klin, Editor-in-Chief, enters the battlefield with your choice of a plus one plus one counter, first strike, or vigilance counter on it. It also says whenever a non-token creature you control enters the battlefield, if Denry has counters on it, put the same number and kind of counters on that creature. So, yeah, yeah, this is incredibly easy to break, and you can actually break it in multiple ways, and the way that you do that is with these little mechanics known as Undying or Persist, each of which can work with Denry, but one's a bit easier than the other, but both are still very easy to break. So this commander can combo quite quickly and it can be very hard to stop. So good luck to your opponents stopping you from doing this. Now you do not have to build this commander in a combo direction, obviously. I mean, if you want to do a counters tribal kind of build, if you want to call it that, where you're like, hey, okay, plus one, plus one counters, first strike, vigilance. There's other kinds of counters you can get on this. I mean, like Tyrite Sanctum, I think that's the card's name. Can actually get an indestructible counter on this, which could be quite powerful. You know, basically, again, every single one of your non-token creatures coming into play gets all those counters. I mean, at the very least, you could probably get a shield counter on this. And yeah, that would also really help out. But of course, the cards I'm going to be talking about in this episode revolve around, again, how I decided to break it. Uh, and again, uh, these are quite powerful. These can go infinite very quickly with this, and there's very minimal setup. And um, yeah, uh, best of luck to your opponents if you're going about it this way. But also, again, if you do decide to play this kind of a deck and your playgroup is not okay with combos, well, don't do that. And if you're not sure, ask your playgroup ahead of time. Commander is a social format, so just talk. And of course, like my previous quick takes on commanders during this spoiler season, I am including a link in the description that includes all the cards I'm talking about in this episode in case you want to pick those up sooner rather than later. Because yeah, when exciting new commanders are spoiled, some cards tend to go up in demand. But now with that said, let's jump into those cards. So the first and easiest way to break this commander is, well, with persist creatures. In fact, it's incredibly simple and you basically don't really have to do anything. I mean, okay, I guess there's one thing you need to do. Again, when your commander comes into play, you've got an option of which kind of counter you want. Plus one, plus one, first strike, or vigilance. You need to pick plus one, plus one. That's literally all you need to do. Then if you have a persist creature in play, like Lesser Manticore, Glen Alenda, Archmage, or River Kelpie, well, they're kind of incredibly difficult to get rid of and incredibly easy to combo with. Lesser Manticore has it, it'll cost to cast this spell, discard a card, and yeah, that's gonna be well worth it, uh, because this creature does have persist. And again, it's just a two-mana creature. Very low to the ground, easy to get out. And yeah, again, persist means 
When this creature dies, if it had no minus one, minus one counters on it, return to the battlefield under its owner's control with a minus one, minus one counter on it. So Lester Manticore is like, okay, oh no, I'm going to the graveyard. Oh, I don't have any minus one, minus one counters. I'm coming right back. Okay, I'll have a minus one, minus one counter on me because of this. And then thanks to your commander saying, hey, you're a non-token creature coming into play. So you're going to get the same number and kind of counters that I have on me. And again, I chose plus one, plus one counter. So you get that. So then Lester Manticore is coming back into play with both a minus one, minus one counter on it and a plus one, plus one counter on it. And I can't remember what year that rule changed, but essentially those counters cancel each other out. So that means Lester Manticore is back in play without any minus one, minus one counters on it. So if it were to die again, you get it back again and then again and then again. And you see where this is going. But yeah, of course, even more powerful things can be done with this with persist creatures that have additional things on them, essentially. Like Glenelan Archmage, pay a blue, sacrifice it, counter target non-creature spell. As long as you've got mana open for this, good luck to your opponents ever getting a non-creature spell through. All you need to do is have this in play with your commander who has a plus one plus one counter on it, and you say, okay, oh, you cast a non-creature spell, pay a blue, sack it, counter that. Cool. All right. Oh, it came back. All right. Do the same thing again. But yeah, we'll talk about more broken things that you can do with this. And yeah, River Kelpie, uh, River Kelpie is incredible with this commander. It's a 3-3 with persists, and it has whenever it or another permanent enters the battlefield from a graveyard, draw a card. Whenever a player casts a spell from a graveyard, draw a card. Now, yes, you just get some nice incremental value in case anyone's casting any spells from graveyards, like, you know, with a flashback or, or whatnot. But yeah, whenever any creature comes into play, you know, because of persist or another mechanic we'll talk about here in a bit, you are drawing a card. So again, with your commander and maybe with a way to sacrifice this repeatedly, you can draw your entire deck or as many cards as you want to. Now, do keep in mind, I guess I should say that's not a may. So, you know, if you do end up drawing your entire deck um, and you want to win by sacrificing creatures and benefiting from them in different ways, you need to get rid of this. But again, if you've got your entire deck, you, you have ways to do that. But now that we've talked about persist creatures in this line of play, let's talk about kind of the reverse of this and another way to essentially go infinite with this commander. And that would actually involve a different kind of counter with a minus one, minus one counter. Again, our commander doesn't just naturally have the ability to get a minus one, minus one counter on it like it can with a plus one, plus one counter. So if we are going for this line of play, well, first up, don't choose plus one, plus one counter when the commander comes into play. Choose either first strike or vigilance counter. And then luckily our commander has two toughness. So yeah, if we have something like contagion class or gore vassal or grasping dunes, we get a minus one, minus one counter on it. Contagion class has when it enters the battlefield, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. And if we really want to, we can pay four and tap proliferate. Gore Vassal has sacrificed Gore Vassal, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Then if that creature's toughness is one or greater, regenerate it. So we can actually utilize this to, well, save our commander if we really need to. We can regenerate it with this and also, again, get that key minus one, minus one counter on it. And then even one of our lands with Grasping Dunes can help. It has tap Batacolus or pay one tap sacrifice, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature, activate only as a sorcery. Because again, it is quite important that our commander gets that minus one, minus one counter on it, because then whenever any of our non-token creatures come into play, they also come into play with a minus one, minus one counter on them. Which normally, you know, in a lot of situations would be a bad thing because minus one, minus one counters tend to be a downside in a lot of circumstances, but not with this kind of play. Because of course, undying is similar yet different from persist and then it deals with plus one, plus one counters. For example, Stormbound Geist is a 2-2 with flying that can only block creatures with flying, but that really doesn't matter because it has Undying. So again, with that Undying, it's kind of like the opposite of Persist. It says, when this creature dies, if it had no plus one plus one counters on it, return to the battlefield under its owner's control with a plus one plus one counter on it. So again, if our commander has a minus one minus one counter on it, uh, our creatures coming into play are going to get that. And then again, essentially the exact same thing happens. Stormbound Geist is going to die, come back into play with a plus plus one counter on it, and then it also gets that minus one minus one counter thanks to our commander, and then those counters cancel out. So it's at the exact same spot it was before, and yeah, if it just keeps dying, it just keeps coming back. So we can also utilize cards like Relentless Scabs, which does have an additional cost to cast it with the Exile Creature card from our graveyard, but that's okay, but it does have Undying, so yes, that's why we want it. And then draw some Mind Crusher, a 5-5 five five that is perfect for this deck. It of course has Undying, and when it enters the battlefield, target player mills five. So just with any sacrifice outlet, or should I say any free sacrifice outlet, plus this and our commander, and our commander has that minus one, minus one counter on it, that is game. We mill out all of our opponents, five cards at a time, but still we can do this as many times as we need to. 
And of course, there are actually free sacrifice outlets that can actually just kind of win us the game on their own, essentially, once we get this combo set up. We don't even need a creature with this kind of effect or, you know, another effect in play, but we'll talk about some of those here in a bit. Let's go through those fantastic outlets. First up, yeah, Altar of Dementia. That's a great card for this deck. An artifact for two that says sacrifice a creature. Target player puts a number of cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power from the top of their library in their graveyard. Basically, mill a player equal to power. So again, with either our Persist or Undying combo, we essentially say, okay, sack a creature, uh, mill you that, uh, that creature came back, cool. Sack that creature, mill you for that. Just do this an infinite number of times, and yes, we mill out all of our opponents. Or how about Blasting Station, artifact for three that has tap, sacrifice a creature, Blasting Station deals one damage target creature or player, and whenever a creature comes into play, we can untap Blasting Station, and of course we are going to do that. So, tap, sacrifice that creature, ping a player for one, that creature comes back, we untap Blasting Station, and do it again, and again, and again. Infinite damage to every creature that we want to ping down if we really want to, and yeah, of course, infinite damage to our opponents. Or how about Ashnod's Altar, which actually, you know, just doesn't win us the game outright, but uh, can easily set us up to win. It's that sacrifice a creature, add colors, colors to your mana pool. So this is a fantastic free sacrifice outlet that obviously can generate a ton of mana, in fact, an infinite amount of mana if, you know, we have this combo going. Now, obviously, that mana is colorless, but if we've got, you know, a giant X spell, you know, like maybe like a blue sun zenith, that could definitely help us win from there, too. And moving on, if you've got like $90 or $100, I don't even know how much Phyrexian Altar is right now. If you've got that much money lying around and you want to spend on Phyrexian Altar, good for you. But yeah, sacrifice a creature at one mana of any color. So this one is basically a better version of Ashnod's Altar with this situation because now you just have infinite mana of all colors. So have fun casting all the spells that you want to. And of course, if you've got, you know, that creature like Drolf's Mind Crusher that can actually just win you by being sacrificed over and over and over again, Fanatical Devotion or, you know, sacrifice outlets like it are going to do the trick. It says sacrifice a creature, regenerate target creature. So this one is pretty incredible in this deck anyways, just because, yeah, protecting your commander is very important. And again, even without, you know, a win con at that point, you can just you know, regenerate your commander or any of your creatures over and over and over again, as long as you've got your commander set up with the right counter and you know that undying or persist creature in play. And then, of course, once you do get to that win condition, maybe like an Altar of the Brood, you just win from there. It says, whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. So, again, when your Persist or Undying creatures come back into play, mill your opponents infinitely. And yeah, besides Altar of the Brood, there's plenty of other combo pieces that can work like this. You know, there's things that say, okay, whenever, yeah, a creature comes into play, or whenever a creature dies or leaves play, make sure you're considering those. Now, when it comes to commanders that might want this card, you know, Atraxa loves counters. Atraxa might want this card in the 99 of its deck. So yeah, if you're an Atraxa player, consider it. Atraxa is a 4-4 with Flying Vigilance, Death Touch, and Lifelink. And of course, on top of that, at the beginning of your end step, Proliferate. So obviously, being able to pick the right counter to get on your creatures can be very impactful. And yeah, if you just start getting even just plus plus one counters on all your creatures coming into play, that's a great start for Atraxa to then proliferate that and then to make that pretty absurd. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Denry Klin, Editor-in-Chief. Again, keep in mind you do not have to build a combo deck around this commander. You don't have to involve Persist creatures or Undying creatures. Now it's incredibly powerful if you do that, but still that's not for every player and that's not for every playgroup. You could definitely build a very powerful, you know, let's call it a counters tribal deck again, where you utilize things like shield counters. And again, you use those first strike and vigilance counters other types of counters too, like maybe, you know, the indestructible counter to just do some very powerful things without, you know, involving those undying or persist creatures. Or, you know, if you want to break it and your playgroup's okay with that, go for it. But yeah, there are a ton of other exciting spoilers during this spoiler season, so check out my other quick takes, especially the one from this morning. My goodness, Smuggler Stash. Players are going to like that. And I think I just said that name wrong. I keep doing that. Smuggler Share. I think that's it. Anyways. Make sure you're also staying tuned for more quick takes on this channel because, yeah, it appears more and more cards keep coming out somehow. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.